if you don't do anything, then it speaks volumes where you let the very people that help vote you in down. I understand that organ transplant decisions are very complicated and they're made by a national body on the basis of a survivability and I'll defer to the experts on that. I think you need to rethink whatever decisions you're currently making staying out of this because again it's not just one person it affects potentially affects hundreds of thousands thousands right that needs a transplant of any sort and it's a shame to see anybody go through this. Right. I think you need to sit down with your caucus and see where what avenues you can go through to. If you can't just straight up overturn it or if you don't want to. Put pressure. Somebody definitely needs to sit down somewhere and rethink the decisions that are being made to just disregard people's lives. Sydney Fizard for Rebel News. Recently, we released an exclusive report on Sheila Annette Lewis. Diagnosed with a terminal condition, she was denied by her doctors, Alberta Health Services, and three levels of court here in Canada, a life-saving organ transplant. In that report, we detail everything you need to know about Sheila and the situation she finds herself in. It's not just that she was told she needed a novel vaccine for COVID to get this life-saving transplant she desperately needs, but even after getting COVID twice and developing immunity, she was told she would need to get a booster. What's even crazier is that she was then told her family would also have to get boosted for her to have this transplant. After the Supreme Court's dismissal, Sheila opened a new case under different legal counsel, now going after AHS for medical malpractice. Sheila has also been in communications with a hospital in the United States, which is willing to perform this transplant, but at a cost. A Give, Send, Go campaign was created for Sheila, aimed at covering the massive legal fees for this transplant and the testing involved to confirm her acceptance. This can be found at givesendgo.com gamm5. To see my interviews with Sheila Annette Lewis, her previous legal counsel, and reports on this situation, I encourage you to go to organsnotcoercion.ca. The situation Sheila's going through is incredibly difficult, to say the least. We went to her home and saw firsthand what physical and emotional strain her diagnosis is causing. We were also granted the opportunity to interview one of her sons, Darcy, who has been taking the lead role in caring for her during this time. He detailed the supports in place for Sheila and shared with us his perspective on the situation. Today, we bring you our full interview with Darcy, whose mother was denied a life-saving organ transplant over her and her family's COVID vaccines and booster status. There's nothing he doesn't do. And makes my breakfast, gets my coffee. He makes sure everything's set out. Should have been here the other month when uh, the power went out. Uh, I went out here not too long ago again as well for a couple hours, but there was another one there a couple months ago that went out. Yeah. And I drove down to uh, Hart Oil Field and I uh, rented a light tower for a generator just so we could keep these running. Because mm -hmm. uh, the these tanks here, they don't obviously don't last long, especially on constant flow. Yeah. Uh, eight to 10 uh, constant flow, they don't last long at all. These two are 24 seven without disruption. Yeah. Uh, if we, even one of these goes down, she's gasping. And then we could turn on the other one, but then she's stuck to not really doing anything at all, which is most of the time anyways, but no cooking or nothing. Cause then we don't have a third pick me machine to uh, help her when she's exerting energy. And you can you probably feel the heat down there in that corner. Yeah, yeah we, we keep it cool because it's hard on my breathing, the heat. Yeah. So I just, they, they help me, I help me, and together it all comes together and works. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can only do what we can do, right? Yeah. Uh, Sheila Lewis was my mother. The, uh, from the start, I guess it wasn't too bad, but eventually it got bad enough where I moved from Edmonton. Uh, quit my job up in Fort McMurray, tried to find work up here, and I did for a while until things progressed enough where um, just full-time, somebody home with her now. So the other fellas, the other brothers, sorry, were, um, they had their own lives doing their own thing. I didn't have a girlfriend, no kids, no nothing. So it was just, I found it was easier for me to do it. Plus the older brother, I felt like it was my responsibility as well to kind of bear a lot of that. 2019, 2018, before all this happened, just tell me who Sheila was then. She was, she's definitely got the salesperson 
kind of attitude in life. She could sell ice to an Eskimo. <laughs> like, and she's a, she's a go-getter. And didn't matter what it was. Like, for us growing up, she worked. She, uh, she made sure we were off to school. She made lunches. She made supper. And then she took care, cleaned the house. You know, everything else after that. Made sure we got to bed. And then she had her own time. But she'd be up till 2 o'clock in the morning sometimes making lunch. You know, just to make sure we had a lunch to go to school. And then now... Uh, uh, other than that, she um, very happy go lucky, very happy go lucky. Yeah, um, uh, she wasn't perfect, of course, but couldn't ask for a better mother growing up, and couldn't ask for a kinder person. She was always very kind. She very selfless. As long as her boys were okay and the house was good, she didn't care about nothing else. Yeah. How has this situation changed or affected Sheila from, you know, the mother you used to know to the mother you know now? The mother I used to know, she's still there. You see it, you see glimpses of it time to time. And those days are really good. Uh, it took, it obviously takes a lot out of her. Uh, so being the charismatic, funny, she's very happy go luck. She loves, she likes the adventure. And now she's lost the adventures. You know, it's just worrying about this, worrying about that. Have I got everything I need? Are the tanks going? Is the oxygen still flowing? It's always a 24 hour worry. So when, especially when she goes to sleep, she's worried the tanks will go off some time or the power will go out. So, so I stay up a little bit longer for her to make sure. And obviously I can only stay up for so long myself, but uh, yeah. And she also has to show some emotional restraint um, because if she laughs, she might lose os oxygen. If she cries, she might lose oxygen. Mm -hmm. What's it? like to see someone going through that you can imagine i guess per se you know if you've had anything on in your life but it's it's definitely tough she's she's damn strong and that's not even she survived cervical cancer she had cervical cancer she had a full hysterectomy done did that went about her life like she was before working and such and then now it's back to the same thing but now it's much worse much worse. Uh, how do you feel about the, the reason for this denial of the organ transplant? Complete outrage. Not just for her, because I know, like, as she has said before, too, it's not just her. It's, it's everybody that now or in the future that needs one, right, that needs a transplant of any sort. And it's a shame to see anybody go through this, not just her or us or the family or anybody that's affected by it. But it's just madness. And where, why it came down to the decision like that is beyond me. Who has a moral conscience? Who could make a decision like that to not just affect one person, hundreds of thousands potentially? But perhaps clearly this has changed your outlook on the healthcare system and the legal system. Mm -hmm. uh, could you just describe that shift of perspective? I knew there was problems with every country. You know, we're no different than any other country. We all have our own problems and our good sides. But since all this, and then seeing some of the things that have been pushed against my mother, particularly, that's all I could speak to. It's, it's not what I thought it was growing up. It's definitely an eye opener. Um, it's something you can't unsee and something that needs to be changed. Is there anything you would want to say directly to the politicians who oversee this? And obviously, Daniel Smith is the premier of Alberta. Do you have any message for them that you would like to share? I think you need to rethink whatever decisions you're currently making staying out of this. Because again, it's not just one person. It affects potentially hundreds of thousands, thousands, right? I think you need to sit down with your caucus and see where, what avenues you can go through to, if you can't just straight up overturn it, or if you don't want to, put pressure and come up with something with the healthcare system and your government to uh, even potentially write a new policy saying that this is wrong because there I'm sure there's something somewhere I'd have to go through it all and read it but it's pretty long but I think they de somebody definitely needs to sit down somewhere and rethink the decisions that are being made to just disregard people's lives what's your message to Canadians at this time who, who are seeing the situation unfold stay strong have faith pray that's all we can do fight the good fight if you know anybody else that's going through this, help them, right? They're, they're scared, they're alone, you know? Uh, mom goes to the bathroom just to cry, so we don't see it, right? 
or she'll go into her bedroom and just sit there and cry. You know, so they're scared, they're alone. Fight the good fight. You see anybody else going through any sort of trouble like this or anything, any sort of trouble, help them out. We're Canadians. We're known to help people. You know, we're known to help pick a, the man beside us up, or the woman beside us up. Fight the good fight. Keep strong. For anybody that's messaging my mom, um, donating money, um, and helping her out in any way that anybody out there is helping her, we cannot thank you enough. There's, uh, I sit with mom every day and I see the outrage people have uh, in her defense and some of the kind things that people try to do or do um, or donate. Even there was somebody the other day, my mom, uh, she was devastated the other day. Somebody donated $7. And it's not the amount that was given that was uh, anything in particular outside of the fact that it was, you know, um, what if this person doesn't have enough money? to barely or they're barely scraping by but they still donated seven dollars she was flabbergasted she was just i think she messaged somebody i think there was a name to it i can't remember i think she might have but i can't remember exactly but um thank you thank everybody that's helping my mom out um giving her good cheers you know make her smile and helping around donating thank you so much we cannot thank you enough As a final note, I want to remind you that there is the Give, Send, Go for Sheila, and if you wish to donate directly to her cause, you can do so at givesendgo.com slash G-A-M-M-5. And if you wish to see more of our reporting on Sheila and Annette Lewis, go to organsnotcoercion.ca. And while you're there, consider signing the petition that we plan on dropping off to our health minister here in Alberta, Adriana Lagrange. We want to make sure that they know what they're doing has a real impact on everyday Canadians. For Rebel News, Sydney Vizard.